Okay, we're going to make a start now. We welcome everyone here tonight. On those, not too many here tonight, must be quite a few at home. On those watching it on um, on YouTube, on those, but it's, yeah, it's a cold night and that's, and um, thank you for those who have come out and those and that to come and see you here. Well, anyway, um, I'll start off with some news first of all. This abuses what's been going around the uh, EV scene at the moment. Um, first one here was for Tesla. That just dumped, jumped two slides. That's better. Uh, Tesla's had some news. I know they've been in the press as well. Last month they had the, uh, the power wall. On those was all in the news. And this month, <coughs> on those, instead of insane mode, what have we got? We've got ludicrous mode now. So um, they've got the cars to go even faster than they had before, like the Tesla Model S. This is the uh, P85, the twin uh, twin axle model. The way that they did it, they managed to increase the current from 1300 amps to 1500 amps up through the motor controller. So yes, it's the same battery as that's being used in the, in the previous model, but by up Break, upgrading the circuit breakers and the uh, fuses, the fusing system within the battery compartment, they've now respected it now at 1500 amps. And so 0 to 100 Ks has now gone down to 2.8 seconds from 3.2. And I think they were quoting that the acceleration of the car is more than 1G. Now it's 1.1 or 1.2G. So you're actually accelerating faster than you would fall off a building. <laughs> On those, so it is ludicrous on those really quick. Um, not many petrol cars can keep up with it. There are, there are only some of the specialty ones. And it's 10 grand, 10 grand for the upgrade. It's what you'd pay if you, you have to buy it on a new car, on those 10 grand, you know, extra for, um, for that upgrade. And then the other upgrade that they announced was um, they've gone to 90 kilowatt hours in their battery. Previous one, I can't remember. I think, was it 84, 84, 82? kilowatt hours so it's a, a slight increase on that in the capacity of the battery and it's interesting the way that they've done it um, the battery is the same size and the same weight but they're using Panasonic and now using a um, battery that has a silicon included in the anode uh, silicon will uh, give more uh, more charge capacity and that within the battery when it's added to the anode but it's not a pure silicon anode it has silicon added to it so they're still playing around with the chemistry of the batteries on those and trying to improve their capacity and their performance on it. Um, I thought that maybe uh, Tesla had gone to LG on those like a lot of the other companies have, but no, no, they're still using Panasonic batteries and Panasonic has released this upgrade. So another three grand more and you'll get um, our 480 kilometre range at over 100 kilometres an hour. So that's the best in the class. But uh, in the uh, hobbyist scene, like in the um, conversion scenes, there's also been a lot of work that's been going on as well with Tesla and that at the moment. On those, Michael Elias, who's um, a engineer at CERN in Switzerland, um, you know, the big atom smasher over there, he's been doing some work with the Tesla drive chains on those. So we're starting to see Tesla drive chains coming out of wrecks on those, and they could be put into a, um, a vehicle you know, into a conversion on those. So we'll start to see them come available. But then you've got to work out how to work it. So um, what Michael Elias, the system he's doing, he's come up with a driver board that will drive any of the AC motors. So it's a universal driver board. It's using standard um, chips, standard technology. And then uh, it feeds, feeds the three phase signal into the um, inverter of the uh, Tesla Model S. But uh, He's tested it with the Tesla drivetrain and he's also tested it with a Chevrolet Volt. And um, with the inverters that are used in AC motors, it has to be, they have to be matched. The inverter has to match the motor. You know, it's not like quite often what we see in our um, electric bikes and then some of the other motors where you can use one brand of controller and another brand of inverter. But these ones, they have to match. But uh, the way that Michael's got around that is um, he's included a, a, learn a learning mode in the software. So the software will actually go through a diagnostic, a pretest mode to learn how to uh, control that particular motor. 
and then it will then operate correctly on that motor. So that's an additional step that had to be done in the motor controller. This over here is the motor controller board. Um, Mike Lubius has developed because that is a Tesla inverter and the drivetrain actually goes on the end, but that's the inverter. And so he's able to feed the um, IGBTs directly on those uh, in the, and sort of bypass the controller that's within the Tesla inverter and feed it himself. So this is one um, development. So as you will see on the next slide, um, the Tesla drivetrain is rated at 310 10 kilowatts, it's 416 horsepower. So it's one of the most powerful um, AC drivetrains available on those, the, um, the other ones like you get from Siemens and that um, aren't rated that much power. And the drivetrain includes inverter, the motor, differential on those, it's all included within the one package and that within the Tesla Model S. <coughs> Why I put this slide up here is there's another there's another team that's also working on trying to hack the Tesla Model S drivetrain so it can be used in um, conversions. And uh, this team is from EVTV, and they've done it a different way. They're going to include the original Tesla inverter and that, and they're actually working by sending it the correct messages to make it operate. So in other words, they're trying to crack the CAN bus communications that's used for uh, controlling the drivetrain in a Tesla Model S. And they've had success on those back in June. They've got it all going, got it running. They had a Tesla mod, uh, motor running on the on their test bench. And now they're just continuing to refine that and work out how they're going to do it. Uh, with a Tesla Model S, it's CAN bus communication to the drivetrain. They use an Arduino with a um, little CAN Dewey shield. But the throttle and the brake are hardwired. Originally, they thought that the Tesla, that the um, the instructions for the throttle and that might go down the CAN bus, but it's not. It's just six direct wires. So um, you can take the motor out of a Tesla and you can put a throttle on your on your car, and those and just wire it straight in on those. It's done there. And the same with the brake braking system as well is also hardwired as well. So there's actually a switch on the brake pedal. And then the regen actually works through the throttle, you know, like your one pedal throttle uh, system and that. What they found out was that there's seven CAN messages that are needed to run the drivetrain. So after they analysed all the messages that were going down the CAN bus, they found that seven, there were seven messages that were necessary for the drivetrain to work. And they've already worked out what those seven messages are. But the future work that they plan to do is they want to know the um, drivetrain also produces other information that's coming out on the CAN bus and they want to work out what that is. <coughs> they think some of them might be like the RPM of the motor, um, information coming out about what current the, the controller is drawing. And then there's also temp temperature sensors within the motor and the inverter. So they would also be coming out through the CAN bus as well. So they've got a little bit more work to do and that before they crack all the messages coming back from the inverter. Um, giving you diagnostics and information on how the how the motor is going, but um, that's the basic system. So they want to be able to crack crack the CAN bus messages, and then um, a motor out from a Tesla could be used from a wreck and could be put into a a car or a dune buggy or whatever you wanted to build. Also coming up um, in November on those is the Festival of Cars which has been organised at Cruden Farm, which is down the Lang Warren. It's on the 27th, 22nd of November. Um, the RACV is sponsoring this event and uh, they've invited us to be involved with it as well. They'd like to have electric vehicles um, to be there. Tesla's already attending this event and Nissan and Mitsubishi and that are looking at it as well. And because um, the RACV knew that we ran the expo the EV Expo, they've invited us also to become involved with this event as well. And then we could have a few conversions and a few other cars on that there as well. So we're looking for someone to be involved in organising. Well, the main thing that needs to be done for this event is that um, there's a charging station here on those, which is um, owned by the RACV Club Assist. They have a charging trailer that's used, which is a portable one. You know, you hook it up onto the back of a car, it's on a tow bar, tow it down to where you're going to use it. 
and it can charge two cars at once. It has a generator on it. It's got an LPG generator and, um, and it runs on LPG. So they start it up and it can then charge two cars, um, level two charging at once. So we're looking for someone who would um, pick, the, pick up the trailer, someone who has a tow bar on that on a car. Um, the trailer is kept in Dandenong, Dandenong South, the, south at the club assist headquarters and then just take it down to the event and then bring it and then return it afterwards and that is the end there. So this will be a great event, there's going to be classic cars there, you know, it'll be uh, quite a bit involved, that on it and Cruden Farm and that's really well known. And then there was, I was doing a, a project which I've been talking about for the last couple of months on that on um, using charging stations and how as club members and that we'd be able to use the charging stations. So last week, well last month I brought along this charge adapter that I built, enabling you to plug a conventional um, 240 volt, you know, power plug level one charge into the charge adapter and those and use it with a EV charging station. Well, last week I went and tried it out and then I've got it going. So here's the Vectrix. Um, this is down at the uh, charge point charge station. It's a level two charge station sitting on the, the wall there. And there's the adapter box there, the adapter box that I've used. So I plug my Vectrix into the adapter box and the charge is through there. So I went down and um, charged my bike on, um, on one of the uh, public charge stations. So the adapter and that's working. So that could be used with um, one of our conversion cars, which you know you might plug into the garage at home, <coughs> and then you can now use it on a level two charging station. Right. I was looking at uh, the fast charge, you know, the level three fast charge, which uses the Chidemo protocol. But after a research that's been done around the world, we found that you have to have a battery um, that's 230 volts or higher to be able to use the Chidemo charging standard. On those, so um, at Chidemo, most of the chargers won't charge a 144 volt battery that's in you know a lot of our conversion cars. So I'm not going to be bothering trying to continue working on with that because it's quite a complex project. On those, but um, yeah, you have to have um, a higher voltage battery system to be able to use the Chidemo charging um, system. So that's as far as we've got. That's as far as I'm going to go with the public charging project. So we have an adapter on those and uh, I can build an adapter for anyone who wants one in through there. It's um, fused, it's fused at uh, 40 amps or 32 amps, it's fused out for the thing and uh, this one's got an on off switch on it so at least you can hook it all up on those and activate the charge station and then just flick it on on those. You're not trying to plug in you know, a live outlet on those or you know, disconnect the car by pulling the plug off the side, you've got an on off switch on that. So that's some of the news that we've got for tonight. Um, anyone else got any news they wanted to bring to the group? Anyone else been, been happening? Uh, what you've been up to, Dean? Uh, I'm just going to say the world's fastest accelerating car is uh, electric now. So I think it's not to 101.7 seconds or no, so. Car, car, car. Okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, well, that's. That's pretty exciting. I think I saw you, you put that on uh, Facebook, wasn't it? It was the one, was it in the US? Yeah. On those. So have they have they run the car? Did it go through? Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I, I'm not sure if they've done uh, like anything official, but uh, that's been claiming one point. Yeah. I think it's 1.7 seconds. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that was right in, yeah. the, in there. So, you know, like on the salt flats or something, they were going to try and race it, you know, like what oh, they did with the, the blue uh, band. Yeah, that, uh, the, 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 uh, the electric car they're running for the, the, the uh, speed record, I think that's another one. Oh, okay. uh, that's, uh, that one, they've, they've had it ready to go for the last two years, but salt flats have not been uh, hard enough for them to run yet. So, but uh, that one should be the fastest car in the world. Oh, wow, so there's two of them we're really talking about yeah, there, aren't they? Two on those, one like fastest accelerating fastest or? Fastest accelerating, the other one's just flat out fastest. Um, a high speed one. Oh, okay. Ah, well, I think those petrol heads are run pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Isn't it? And I mean, Pikes Peak, wasn't it? We had the yeah. electric cars came first and second. First and second, yeah. On those, it. even though both of them had, um, you know, technical issues oh, and, well, and can okay. go faster. 
um, yeah, they still manage first and second. <laughs> Let's see what they do next year. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, Rice Miller, who came first, uh, he lost power halfway up the hill. He, he lost, he's got six motors. He had three motors on the front wheel and three motors on the back. And he lost um, one of the axles, either, either, I can't remember if it's the front or the back. So he only had half the power on those of what he did and he still um, won convincingly. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. That's amazing. Any other news and that coming up through the group? You want to get anything else? No. no. Okay, well I might hand it over to the people from Barger Board now. Thanks for coming and uh, Annette, and uh, let's see what they've got to say. Pretty light indeed. You got photos, right? I do have photos. Is enough to the side? So, hi everyone. My name is George. That's James. And so we are the uh, team of Baja Board at the moment. So uh, I look after the uh, the business and operations, general management side. I'm the chief technical officer, and the product. So this is the Baja Board. Well. It all started with that one back in 2010 or something. Yeah. Just, we just decided to prove the, the concept of independent steering on a skateboard. It hadn't really, really been done before, so it's just a basic proof concept to prove um, getting independent steering on a skateboard. Can so, I ask, how is that steering different to when you actually, is it the leaning type steering? Yeah, like it's yeah. so it's still, it's still activates through leaning, but instead of actually tearing up a pivot, uh, that solid truck and axle, it actually, yeah, the wheels actually turn independent from each other. Okay. So it gets way different than yeah, any other conventional skateboard on the market. But this was just to prove the concept that yeah, independent steering actually works. So. I think there's, there's, there's two versions of the starting story. The first version is the fact that we used to be, actually used to be skateboarders, because now that we've ridden this for three years, we can't get back on the skateboard anymore. The <laughs> stability is just not there. We're not used to that level of, you know, being able to fall out from under, underneath you. Um, the, the, the first version of the story is we love skateboarding so much, we decided we want to put some motors onto it and really go off road because it just wasn't fast enough. We're getting too lazy with the pushing, with the feet, something more exciting, give you that freedom anywhere you want to ride. And the second version of that story is actually we wanted to go and design an electric car to start with, but that was too expensive. And so we decided to model it down into a uh, skateboard version and so those two both are true and they sort of came together to form the Baja board. So from that picture up there to this has taken about three and a half years to develop through about three different iterations. So we started off in the garage in 2011 and that was the very first proof of concept board we ever built using pram, 12 inch pram tyres uh, similar motors to what we have today, in fact, but we've custom designed ours now. And very simplistic, over-designed, bulky uh, metal structures. Very robust, yeah, because yeah. we didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, dynamics and riding, so it's, yeah, it's probably about twice the weight of this thing. So. That was about 35 kilos. That wouldn't fit in a car and was not very pleasant to carry around, but it moved and it sort of proved to us, okay, well, suspension does work, there's merits to it, um, steering works. Now, there were some issues, obviously. The batteries underneath were exposed. They're not very healthy to, uh, to longevity. And even though it could go very fast, the theoretical top speed was about 80 k's an hour. Yeah. We only ever went up to about <laughs> 20, uh, 55. That, that was your... Yeah. I do think we can show a video of that on this one. So you still got that? That yeah. one. Uh, there's, there's parts and pieces lying around that we sort of cannibalize it as we, as we go along. So look away if you've got a headache. So that was uh, some lost footage we found before today. We're chasing a car on the road. I shouldn't show this, it's incriminating evidence for us. <laughs> it's going on YouTube. No, it's all right then, that's already on YouTube, so 
Oh, okay. So that, that was doing about 50, I think, 55 um, on the street. And I'm going to say that's a 60 <coughs> hour zone. Wow, cool. And so, that, yeah, that, so that in terms of speed, actually worked very well, even though you never needed the top, um, the top level of it. But the issue came in when we try to go to the lower end, the starting torque. And because we wanted to build an off-road board, it had to take off very quickly, but we ran into issues where it just couldn't get over rough terrains and we'll get bogged. <laughs> so it wouldn't go over, over sand. That was pretty embarrassing, but we weren't selling that one, so it was okay. <laughs> In 2014, we decided. What 2014 was in the year? 13. 13. 13. 13. Yeah. We just started designing the Generation Two, which was the one we brought over to the first um, EV Expo we attended. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we went in the complete other direction for that one. In the in the very first model, it was all bulk, heavy. Uh, you can crash into a wall. It's fine. You probably won't be fine, but the ball will be fine. We went to the other direction. We said, look, we're going to cut off all the weight and try to minimise it as much as possible. So we went with. Everything pretty much carbon fiber. So all the arms were replaced with carbon fiber rods. The deck, we made a mold ourselves and uh, molded that. Um, I think that's the only one. The, the shop towers, mounting positions, they, they were carbon fiber. They still are carbon fiber at the moment. And we ended up doing a lot of gluing of rod ends to tubes at home for many weekends. That's what it looked like when it's on the kitchen table, completely taken apart. That was a long time ago. And when it was put together, we, uh, we were still in a prototyping phase, so we weren't going for the entirely finished look or the batteries were still exposed, but we decided it would be a good idea to move it from the bottom to the top where it's a bit more protected. And, uh, and that board, we limited the top speed to 50 k's an hour. Um, and as, you know, and we did do the Kickstarter uh, campaign on the back of that board as well. But unfortunately for Kickstarter, that board was still was too far from finished and people saw through the fact that to actually get to a finished product, it was going to take another year. And so we got some seed funding out of that to take the project forward. Um, but the actual board itself wasn't received. It was received with great interest, but it wasn't received overly well in terms of purchase. And so you see, it did go quite quickly across off-road surfaces. That's not exactly too tough for us now, but back then it was okay. We have not seen this footage in a long time. Are you all crash test dummies, or do you have uh, somebody in particular who takes it out? So we, we ride it regularly, but we also have uh, like skateboarder test riders, mountain bikers, people who call on different fields of experience boards. For the record, though, we won't mention the other other brand's name. The only time we've actually fallen off and hurt ourselves seriously was after we rode this for two years. We're so used to riding with the stability, we got on someone else's board try to break, the brake just wasn't there. And then when the dick kick in was a one wheel drive board, it just pivoted and sent one of, the, one of us flying off and it was just a disaster. <laughs> so that was the only serious injury we claim to have today. Yeah. That bit of footage you just showed, uh, I take it that was someone who, uh, what one of you got? Yeah, it's me, yeah. yeah okay, okay. And you've been riding the, these through the development phase, etc. Uh, someone like me who hadn't been on a skateboard since I was a young teenager, uh, how long would I would you expect someone like me to have to uh, she should ask George that because George build up to be able to ride? Yeah, George used to skateboard as a kid, but then took a massive break until I didn't skateboard. I skateboarded when I was twelve to fourteen. Then I completely stopped. I changed sport. It took maybe half an hour to get up to about forty k's an hour on this. Okay. Because of the stability, there is, you don't have the fear of it going out from under your feet. You have no fear of running into a rock and having that scenario where you fall over. That's one of the reasons I stopped skateboarding because I just couldn't <laughs> hack the fact that I can ride and suddenly a small rock and you're off. Um, and when you're turning, it's very intuitive. It, 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 you, know, you don't get the speed wobbles at high. At, uh, you still get it about 50, sure, but you certainly don't get it at 20 or 30 that you would get with normal skateboard. So yeah, half, half an hour to get your confidence up, and once you've been riding it for a few weeks, then just step up and it's fine. 
So after that little exercise, we spent another year up till now, well, not quite now, earlier this year, we were designing the, uh, the first uh, release model, as we call it, the early bird production model. So everything had to be um, fine-tuned and, and tidied up. So all the batteries I can show on the actual board, all the batteries are now contained within our nicely warning label box to tell you not to ride it because you'll get hurt. The suspension arms have been changed out from uh, uh, carbon rods to back to aluminium, 6061 aluminium, for the reason that the the carbon rods, even though they were very light, they were very strong, they couldn't take a front on impact. And every time you hit a tree or something, which we usually did, you end up having to drag it back to the house and replace all the rods. Not expensive. Rods are fine, but just a pain in the bum yeah. after a while. Better durability. Yeah, better and durability. How much, what, what's the weight penalty changing over? Just uh, 100 grams or something? Oh, look, it, uh, back then was about 21 kilograms. We're up to about 25 now. So. Four kilos, but we also changed the battery in the process. We was we were working with the uh, lithium um, polymer at the start, and uh, just having seen a few bad reviews of those things exploding, we decided to go back to uh, lithium ion phosphate. So I actually looked at the, the your website about the graphene battery cells, looking up. But you know, we'll see maybe yeah. in the future. Yeah, that's the number of batteries available out there. So. No, exactly. We've also um, designed our own product, um, uh, controller. So in the past, we were using a big RC car controller. So that was very hideous. So we decided to go back to uh, the drawing board and get ourselves a little mountain bike feel with the, that was the inspiration. A rocket type, so to accelerate, you would just press it there or you hold it with two fingers and to break your, break it on the top portion. We can also- It's like a rocker. Yeah, like a rocker. Mm -hmm. And so the- used for brakes, are they just the motors reversed or? Yeah, the motors. It's mainly just the regen. There's so much force in you know, four motors that we can never get full brake time without falling off. So, yeah, there's enough brakes. So, so it's the idea to run the best ones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so mechanical brakes, what sort of thing? People, don't, people expect to accelerate fast because they've got four motors, but no one ever sort of expects it to stop as quickly as anything else. And that's always the comment we get from new riders saying, my you know, Fico Revolver takes whatever meters to stop, but I always fell off when I press the brakes here. So you have to brace for both the acceleration and the brake. Just a matter of practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we can actually limit the top speed. So we have three preset speeds. Uh, the first one is about 10 k's an hour, I think, uh, 15 k's an hour. So it's pretty tame. You drive around on the streets, or not the streets, as you say, on, on <laughs> off-road paths. Theoretical streets. Straight there, theoretical streets. Uh, then we go to 30 or 33. And then the final one is about 50. And that's when you'll get down a bit and maybe hold the front and get ready to uh, to have a bit of fun. <laughs> and we put in brake lights for the sake of it <laughs> as well, because it's nice. Yeah. So the actual... Um, fundamental philosophy behind this is, is very much a car. If we show you this photo, which is actually the chassis and the main core of the board, the deck itself is more of an accessory. We can replace that with foot pads, with whatever else that we can, as long as we can stand on it, or with a seat to make it do a cart. It's, a, it's variable down the track. At the moment, we're working with uh, MTM down in Oakley South. So we went out there last year and pitched and said, look, we're doing this project. We're looking for a manufacturing partner, getting assembled in Australia, tested and shipped out from here, even though the parts are procured from all over the world. And they said, yeah, and it's very interesting to look to diversify from, um, uh, obviously the car industry isn't doing too well at the moment. <coughs> so we're in there now and we're building our very first 50, which has all been pre-sold and we've started to build the customer list for the second uh, batch of production boards now. And we were also working with another group called the Australian Sports Technology Network. Went out there and did a pitching competition last year, won that one. And so we're, in a, we're part of the incubator program, looking to get ourselves ready to raise some capital and uh, tackle the, uh, the global market very seriously, not just bootstrapping, as people say. Mm -hmm. I do have a final video of the current board in that one, because we can't ride it, it's too cold. We can at least watch the video of it. <laughs> I would say this. No. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and it, it's not the intended writing position, but you can put a seat on it. <laughs> I couldn't turn you that quickly. It's right, catch a taxi the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. You see, we wear a lot of protective gear. <laughs> we have four working at the moment, and uh, the rest was just get letting out the door as we finish it. Yeah, we've got We're constantly testing something or improving the software and the firmware side of things or doing mechanical changes. So this, yeah, always. We'll write, write a manual, send it to our first customers, and explain, you know, these are the changes in theory, these are the characteristics that it will change. It's good to them what they really are. Will customers be able to update their own firmware by downloading a new? Yeah, so we have a, a program port to plug into, and yeah, we'll Update the firmware as we can. Changes we don't think of it. The really proud thing of the current board is the fact that it not only can go fast, it's going fast for a board once you get the speed up isn't that difficult. It's the fact that it can start. In very very bad terrain and have that low low end torque. Oh. Oh, nice one. Oh, it's going through sand quite well now. Right? Yeah, it's, it's going through sand quite well. It's got now. the torque through there. A lot of it came down to actual programming, getting that uh, power to train the run right or the ride train. Uh, do you have any uh, um, like how do you deal with the heat? From the uh, from the motors, because they must get a bit yeah, a bit warm. Yeah, and then you set the motor, and sensors, yeah, and so every motor is a different temperature, and you set the temperature, go go more than 120 degrees, and then you shut down, and we get it. So you know which motor is getting hot, right? Yeah. A lot of things here are still over spec, so that you know. We can upgrade it in future as well, so it's not going to be too hot at the moment. Mm. No, we've never got a problem. I see it'll go without the weight of a person on it <coughs> to trigger any uh, person present sensor. <laughs> right? Um, if you uh, just held the trigger and let the thing go, when it got out of radio range, would it uh, coast to a stop, brake gently, or keep going flat out? Just brake gently. Yeah. That's what it's a, it's a fail safe. Once the seal drops out, it just goes to a complete stop, or it should just break itself to a stop. Right. And the radius is about five meters, you walk five yeah. meters away, it just cuts out. That's we program it. the radio in such that you, you can't get too far away without it tripping and turning off. So. At one stage, we tried like one meter, and that was a bit annoying after you just walk yeah. away time. You bet it just dropped out and you restart the board every yeah. single time. Yeah. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. You're on the board. Yeah, five meters would probably be a reasonable range of you know, roughly in that, in that order of magnitude. Yeah, so at the moment we're just we're making we're making the first batch, we're collecting orders for the second one. Uh, we're doing I mean the, the challenges now is no longer the, the technical side, the actual fundamental design is, is all done. It's now getting this to the mass production stage and really cutting that cost down so that we can add in margins for distributors and uh, and uh, you know dealers. No trouble getting attention for it. Uh, we get you know we easily pretty easily get into magazines and online articles. It is a very high cost uh, startup project to do. I will we'll keep saying we you know we, we wish we did a phone app. That would have been a lot easier but uh, <laughs> and a lot quicker as well. But yeah, but it's been very it's been worth it and uh, look we've got very good partners on board with MTM and the uh, the Australian Sports Tech Network so they're supporting us to to take this into the um, the global market. We sort of see it in the next two to three years being a part of something like the X Games where you can race this around a track or um, you know, not necessarily public transport until you know, these things get legalised. We'll, we'll, we'll pitch it to the sporting side as opposed to travel. Um, uh, using um, 
four motors. I mean, what, what sort of um, uh, what sort of torque are you? Um, is it delivering? Uh, it's about sixty meters on each motor. Sixty. Six meters. Six. Yeah, we don't need that much. Yeah. <laughs> we can push it up. We draw more current, but keep it keep it fairly low, about six. Yeah. Um, yeah, having independent motor control is really good because we can have another train differential. We can also do front and rear balance as well. So yeah, if you want to lose traction in the rear or you want to maintain traction in the front, we can set it up to do as such. Um, and it's the same with the electronic differential, we can run like a balanced dip, like a car, we can run a positive dip, or we can run a negative dip. We can do any sort of dip you want to do within the, the means of the power that we have. Um, so we have a we have a tilt sensor in the board, we know what angle we're riding on, you know what throttle we're giving, put out through our algorithm, which we can't tell talk to you about, but and that spits out what, what we actually control and how we actually turn around the corner as well. So that's looking wow. at the difference between the, the axle and the board tilt rather than just actual tilt of the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're looking, yeah. It's not like you go kind of sideways along a hill and it starts turning. No, no, no. no it's, it's a mechanical sensor. Yeah. I think we also have an accelerometer. Which I found was too sensitive. Yeah, too sensitive. So, so it was bringing all the vibration. But we have, yeah, we have uh, real-time speed sensors on the board, and along with the tilt sensor, and along with your throttle application, you'll actually determine what actual power to give you around the corner. So you get you know, less different high speeds, it's not really used, so you get more different low speeds. So what sort of run time do you get, and uh, is there a, uh, some sort of warning sensor to tell you you better turn around and go back home and say you <laughs> So depending on the terrain you're riding, you're on or how heavy you are, um, I'm about 70 kilos, and I probably get about Forty-five minutes to an hour out of it. We're just one hour. Yeah, we're running the road. I'm just getting out pretty easily. I'm forty-five minutes off, like to go half an hour, really in like high terrain. Um, I don't know what you get, George. I go there forty-five minutes in. Uh, my standard is always around the forty oval. Just go riding around there after it rains, so it's quite soggy and, and boggy, and I can go forty minutes out of that. So yeah, because the, the amount of terrain this one can go on is so much greater than the other skateboards, it, it really varies a lot. <laughs> yeah. So when we hire people, we say, look, it's between 30 to 60 minutes, and how to, how will you treat it is, depends on how you know. Yeah. There is a back indicator there as well, um, but we generally say, look, you can check the indicator, or if you feel it's that jittering, then you know it's, it's obviously going out of battery. The good thing is we are not pushing the max of the battery, so we can have more, but for safety reasons, we are not going to charge like maximum or discharge like that. Right. We're always measuring the voltage of the battery and we see it drop below a certain point, we'll actually like cut the contact and uh, just sort of go and screw the battery. Um, we're still trying to write proper algorithms to see as the battery drops through throttle application, it doesn't actually trip the sensor every time. But once you actually get to a certain point, um, yeah, if you go below that, that threshold, the board will yeah, slow down to that one. Right. Um, you think <coughs> of uh, using maybe NMC or uh, more um, energy dense? Batteries, um, yeah, there's a because a lot of both for they have the, the puncture test and all the rest of it. So, I suppose you uh, um, you assume that people would be riding these pretty hard, yeah, that, that's the main consideration. We've got, we've got two mils of aluminium until it hits the battery, and we haven't punctured that, that case, and it's very difficult to um, so puncture the, uh, the floor of uh, Tesla's, yeah. So, uh, they had to upgrade their uh, the floor pan, okay. That's, that's the main consideration why we use this, this battery. It is a headway cell, um, standard in bikes, readily available. There's a lot of documents out there and specs for it. So, yeah. I mean, we really would like to go to something like an NCR, but it's, it's starting out. They're still relatively expensive. The battery, you know, they're controlling BMS is still an intense thing to do. So, mm. I think this charge rating was a bit too low for us as well, considering the space we had in there to fit everything else in, plus a battery pack. Yeah, about 80, 81 cells around that. Oh, yeah. Physically fit that yeah. in. Yeah, probably like the NMC cells, like some of them that go into power tools. Yeah. You know, um, some of the two, 2.5, 3 ampere hour NCM cells that are going into power tools, the INR range. Yeah. May suit. Yeah. Um, so, what, what's the uh, battery capacity at the moment, and what's the power of the, the, um, the motors putting up? So, battery capacity about 15 amp hours. 15 amp hours, yeah. yeah. Um, each motor. And running what voltage? 
try and keep below high voltages just to save those, especially if you're going to run it through like hot puddles and ponds or whatever, just might just rather keep it low. Yeah, yeah. Um, in case somebody, like one of our customers, wants to actually fix it themselves, there's less chance things going to go wrong. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and each motor is rated to three kilowatts, but in reality, we only ever get it. One kilowatt out of each one. We you don't need any more than that, otherwise, you have to spin wheels and see how many times. Power is there mainly have a bigger motor just for the life of the component, the longevity of the component, having bigger things, more, more copper, just you know, has, a, has a longer life, really. Yeah, yeah. So I noticed earlier boards had footholds. Yes. This one doesn't? It, it's optional. We offer it as an option if to people who really want it. Um, it's uh, a semi uh, foothold or bindings. And the only reason we don't put it on by default is if you ever want to come off, you want to bail, you want to be free to jump off and tuck and roll you get yeah, hurt yourself a bit but it's better than breaking a leg on the board so um we've never had any issues even though we, we have ridden some of us with the bindings uh but we always suggest that people look for the first two months riding it just right with our bindings and then if you're really comfortable with all the behavior you can put the bindings on if you want later on we could hire a story about that but you know, <laughs> on other boards so we decided to just play it safe yeah yeah we come with a few designs to, to mitigate that factor so you have to use binding. So we've got uh, a concave convex deck as well. So it actually sort of traps your foot even though you might when you start when you start leaning on it, because um, we have a concave, your foot's still relatively flat. You still got a flat spot. Yeah. So then same with the toe side turn. So that that's one factor we're using that. The concave deck works really well. We've had a lot of yeah, feedback yeah. from customers people it. riding and saying, you know, that really holds your foot. I don't need the binding anymore, which is a yeah, load off that one. So, yeah. I mean, majority of people, 90% of the people that buy the board from us today is going to use it for pretty tame riding with respect to what this can do. It's only been sort of tempting to worry about when they really go get nuts <laughs> on the jumps and they go, okay, I want to put a binding on. Okay, fine. You know the risks. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, regardless of the legalities, some people are going to put it taken for short trips on public roads now, I think. But uh, I assume that's not what most people are actually going to buy them for. Uh, where are they actually going to be uh, riding them most of them? Uh, if you have a uh, plot of land on big, big backyards, they tell us, or State farms, forest. they can take it on. The other people just tell us they're going to take them on the same place they take the other electric circles. Yeah. Yep. And I would say, okay, well, these good. Um, we follow the legal model of the fix involved saying, look, you've got to, you have to check if it's legal to write it and then that, that, that's oh, yeah, your responsibility. Yeah. Um, we're providing you with a tool to, to have fun with. So just to, you know, we know we can, we're looking at getting this onto a go-kart track and a, and a motocross track at some point. We also, um, we're collaborating with a few different brands of automotive, uh, manufacturers. We're looking at getting onto their test tracks and we want, we're not going to really want to race against the cars, but you know, it's good fun. and. Maybe one of those go kart tracks uh, that could uh, hire out the boards instead of uh, riding go karts. You get on some yeah. motorised boards. That'd be a few jousting sticks as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, why not? We'll try anything. Yeah. <laughs> so you sold these dual customs, or are they just people you know, skateboarders and then trying them? No, that we actually sold them. Um, our target demo, we don't target skateboarders with this because the price point of that is $5,000. So there's going to be our target demographic male, 25 to 50, uh, have some sort of tech background into snowboarding, man bike riding, sort of people that would buy, you know, pay 5,000 for a man bike. Mm. Not someone that would put 100 bucks for a skateboard. There's not going to, yeah, yeah. even though they're interested, they're not going to be able to buy it. Yeah. Whereas the, uh, the, the more senior gentlemen, you know, they want to, have that bit of fun and the, our oldest customer to date is about 62 and he said i used to skateboard but my knees can't take the bumps anymore so i like to sprint <laughs> um, so um the suspension on it i saw that before had uh, rock shocks were they are you still using those or you've changed something no we've else? changed we changed to just a straight damper and spring now metal spring um the trouble with the rock shocks before because they're suited for a mountain bike it's one wheel it's one person weight they actually have a lot of um, resistance. Yeah, resistance Stitching. through the piston, through the air piston. Um, it's it's good at like high speeds, but at low speeds, it just wasn't directly what we wanted. So that that friction was just too high. So 
we just went back to a standard sort of mountain bike shock with adjustable rebound. We have a, a number of different springs we can put on there. <coughs> you know, we've got about four different springs, I think. And we just ask the customer, what's your weight? And we have a, a spring dedicated to them. Yeah. Um, we also have two types of turn springs, which uh, there are turn springs for the actual board. We have two different weights for those as well. So we can fully see the black ones inside. Yeah. 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 Black ones. yeah, they actually return you up to your natural position to help you back up. So you don't just yeah, fall over to one side and just keep turning. <laughs> So the, the technical, one of the technical challenges for you must be been like to get the four motors to coordinate. That's actually not. That's uh, not it's pretty easy. Pretty easy, yeah. Yeah. For me, it's the sink issue of the motor. Like the motors just have to be wound all the same. Yeah. And then, yeah. You should have the motor control does everything. So you can find, find that the motors actually load share through the road surface. Yeah, yeah, they'll actually sink yeah. together. I mean, there might be one percent difference on each. Yeah, there's negligible on the ground steering. And when you're skipping across the ground, do you actually notice a surge in the speed, or is it no, what's the really. response time in seconds or response from the acceleration or from zero to a top speed? What's well, that? we always write with the the stop start. Yes, yeah, stop start. So we did write it with our stop start uh, in the previous. Model and those are zero to thirty. We never went to zero to fifty. Zero to thirty was about uh, one second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, this one we decided to put in launch a soft star, so it, it ramps up. So it doesn't just um, so by <laughs> just slow ramp. It's not yeah. just straight away. So uh, well, maybe two three you seconds. Fall off you will fall off. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for burnouts, but I think most people just fall off and yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much instantaneous. Like, yeah, yeah, when we drive over that launch control, we can't lose it. No. Yeah. So if you're on power, it's, it's there for you straight away. Yeah. That was more interesting. You said, talked about the electronic differential on those and able to change the characteristics on turning and yeah. things and then like that. Of course, one, one car that comes to mind, of course, was the Rymac Concept 1, okay. um, which was the Croatian car there where they um, you actually had several settings on software where you could have an oversteer setting or a neutral or an understeer yeah. setting on those, yeah. in which they probably say didn't electronically, but they're um, yeah. four wheel drives. Is exactly, yeah, that, that's the exact same thing we want to do. Also, the efficiency side of things, and it comes back to the motor sync, because you've got you know, different travel on to one side, so <coughs> we want to overpower one when it's not doing the same amount of work. So we'll actually yeah, have efficiency through the differential as well. Um, but, um, so when you're turning, you actually drive the outside wheel a little bit harder than the inside wheel. Yeah, but yeah, that's what it, well, it depends. Depends. You, you can drive the outside harder if you drive the inside less. So we so can play you know, with it. Positive differential, balance yes. differential, and negative yes. differential. Yes. Yeah, we mainly see like negative differentials more for efficiency, so we don't overload the inside motors too much. Yeah. And positive differential is when you want to go a bit crazy, just get a bit of wheel spin, or drift out in corners, or yes. Okay. We, I mean, if we do everything we do, say like a lock differential at the rear, and a differential at the front, it's just there's a plethora of things you can do, and that's what we're going to be in our program for our customers. So, so effectively, you've got stability control. Yeah, yeah. so it's basically like yes, in reality. <laughs> but wow. yeah, we started off all thinking behind this was originally going to be a car, but we have to prove it in a concept first, and then we're going to make a little scale model, like what if we make a skateboard, and then we just come up with this. So, hopefully, down the line. Do some scooters and some bikes, and then we'll get to our car. Bike next, maybe, hey? Yeah, we just stick some fairing on it. That's it. Yeah. Fairing in the license plate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. get some indicators on this, I think. That's right. Some of the technology that you've developed there, as you see, it can be put onto um, exactly, future yeah. vehicles, onto other other projects that you might want to do later on. Yeah. yeah. On those. So you're saying you've sold, you've got your first production run going through. Yeah. So we're producing so 50 right 50. now. I think we're going to open the pre-orders up again. We're starting to build it now. We've sort of, yeah, we've got a few orders already after we, we open it for about three days. So, um, we yeah, we average about three to four inquiries a day. They don't all say one or five, but you know, they inquire about timing. Mm. What we find is um, it, it is not the cheapest board, but when people ride it, they go, I can feel why it costs what it costs. Um, and the biggest challenge for us at the moment is timing. So we say, look, if you Put the ordering now. We'd have to wait until there's minimum order quantity that's economically feasible. That might take a few months, and then it's going to be another two, three months before we can build it. And uh, so, not too bad because we can't build that many physically ourselves at the moment. So you know, we, we, we're happy with those figures, um, which is why 
the same time, we're also doing a separate project working with the, the investment networks to say, look, let's get some funding going and get the tooling set up so we can crack out a, a hundred day at much lower volumes, at lower costs, mm -hmm. and we'll sell it to the distributors. Mm -hmm. To have, have three wheels in contact with the road and one not, what's the difference in speed on a straight run? You probably wouldn't even notice. Um, it, I mean, you could be walk. about three percent. Yeah, it's a bit negative on your feet. Yes. And okay. be so low. Uh, okay. I mean, we can ride this on two motors relatively easy. We, we still have that difference. Yeah. You're going off, off road. You only need four when you're starting. Once you get yeah. to 10, 20 k's an hour, you just you can shut the front two off. And I was asking you a question because it tells me about slip factor. Okay. And how much slip you've got. Yeah. We have um, speed sensors on the wheels. We actually know relatively what they're doing against each other. It's pretty neat. Yeah. What's the drive? Uh, how's the drivetrain work from the uh, from the motor to the wheel? Uh, it's just a HTD belt, five HTD belt, um, ratio of one to four, one on the motor, one on the rocket. How much is the the electronics hand built, and how much is it off the shelf components? Nothing. Yeah. Oh, there's no, no, like nothing which way. <laughs> like contactors uh, and like fuses and stuff here and there, but basically it's so we all we made from scratch. PCB from a motor because it wasn't have a sensor, a sensor it, and we made the PCB. PCB of the board made a stretch PCB on the end of two PCB on the bottom and same thing. So, yeah, PCB. I mean, the, the only thing that's standard would be the uh, motor controllers themselves, the SNX okay. themselves. Everything else, yeah, we have to play with them. Yeah, apart, apart the contact or we try we try to go off off the shelf. I mean, we really did because it's cheaper, and then it's not yeah, working. You wouldn't find anything. It just didn't um, work. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. well, it's burnt out after about two rides. I mean, this is the really the first ball we can take out day after day, go for rides, and we just come back. It's dirty, it's muddy, but we'll run the next day. In generation one and two, we'll come back. Something's broken. We've got to go and fix it. Yeah. it just, yeah. What's a turning circle? Probably just a normal normal uh, normal road side to side. We can adjust the steering, so um, we can adjust it to slow speed maximum steer just via the mechanical linkages on the steering rods. Yep. If you want to go faster, you take that off and you can chuck it onto a, a less sensitive steering um, point. There are three points you can adjust it by. Yep. And so, you know, depending on what's the, the, the narrowest will be the normal street, you can go to, go to the, uh, the sort of least sensitive, probably two streets worth. Roughly how many metres will we be talking about? Oh, in the five, four or five. Okay. Yeah. With a skateboard like that, I mean, you could probably pick the front of it up and, and turn it if you're in a yeah, exactly. area that needs to turn it quickly. We also, so. Yeah, we also have reverse. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you're getting away from the cops, you can't stop them if they turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> they go and and flat out and keep going. Yeah. 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 But it, everything, there's so many things that are adjustable on the Cast uh, to tow and tow out, um, steering rate, steering angle, suspension, stiffness, dampness, um, turn spring dampness, turn springs themselves. So, yeah. We want to follow the sort of RC car model business models where you sell the basic board as Tesla does. They sell the basic, the base model, and then you option that up with titanium fastness or whatever. And by the, by the time you finish, the $100,000 board is, or well, $100,000 car is about a quarter of a mil. And, you know what, Decker? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, all the options. So, would you classify it as the perfect getaway vehicle? It depends on what you're getting away from. <laughs> <laughs> if you come from the home and it's really, really muddy or under, <coughs> how careful do you have to be cleaning? If, if you, no. you don't hit the most with the hose, you can just clean it in all corners pretty easily just with the hose. Um, the rest of the time, it's just a brush. Yeah, I, I toothbrush it then with a cloth. Um, Probably compress air, blow out the motors, just get the dust down. Is, the is there a, a cover that's not fitted here that uh, sort of covers sort of the side? Uh, no, 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 no that, that's okay. what we try to keep the weight down. Um, but you find the front is usually very clean because uh, all the stuff gets shot to the back, and the back end you've got to clean very well. But the front end's fine. More than that, we, we, um, we don't, I mean, if the intended riding isn't in mud, but we do go and test it in mud. Um, and, just keeps running afterwards. With the position of the stone wind. damage to the side, it hasn't been an issue. No, no not really. really. Maybe no. some paint chip in, that's about it. Yeah. With, with the position of the front, possibly rear wheels, do you find it, it throws water or mud up at the rider? 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's part of the experience. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to go right there, you can't right, just so play it anymore. Mudguards, mudguards, mudguards. How much of the adjustability do you think will have to be uh, removed to try and reduce costs? How, how much do I should say will survive the cost reductions? I don't think much. I mean, relative to terms, it's, it's not real added cost. Most of it is like just adding an extra hole <coughs> somewhere. Um, yeah, you take material out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, not, think, yeah. I think it'd be very interesting if you managed to get a, a sport that was involved in this particular vehicle. You said, oh, I mean, the Olympics and that would be would be fantastic. But, uh, you know, <laughs> to have some particular um, class of sport, you know, uh, an operated event or something that uh, one of the sports institutes to get involved in, yeah. in creating a particular class for this vehicle. Yeah. On those, that would really kick you off and get you going too. And, uh, Especially if there's so much adjustability, then, uh, you know, um, gives a chance for, uh, for riders then to sort of. Um, I think yeah. it'd make exciting television as well if they had a class and that where they were racing these things, you know, on a competitive course or something yeah. around it. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's really fun testing it with more than we have in the, in the park. We have one board, it's one person wrote it only one time, but with you know, three boards, four boards, yeah, the fun just the, the multiplies and racing, yeah, 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 yeah. Race, yeah. You could. I don't want to get run over by a cart. <laughs> but yes, I mean, uh, the lower class, it, it will match it. Well, yeah, that's right, like putting it on a go-kart track. Yeah. I've got a birthday to go to at Silhouette go-kart track. I'm taking this with me. So, so. What, what percentage of your testing has been with both vehicles <coughs> running at the same time side by side with different settings so you can see how they perform with all, respect to each other? All what the time. Percentage? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're we're different different models. That makes a heap of sense. Yeah. yeah. We, never, we never test the same thing side by side. I mean, George is out there, he's, he's a bit heavier than I am, so he's testing some different characteristics or different springs or yeah. shocks. Or, and then Ali's probably testing some crazy differential setting or some high speed setting or something. Yeah. Like three. No, we can want this. So if he goes faster downhill, <laughs> faster <laughs> up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from the LEDs on the back, is there anything that really defines which is the front and which is the rear? I think there's a yeah, the tail lights. Yeah. 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 Oh, they've got actual headlights, but we, we normally will put a sticker there just to check it with the front. But um, no, I mean, the other way we identify is which side has the warning label on it. Um, or we say, look, just turn it on and give it a bit of a squeeze and we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> is, there anything, is, there, is there anything to stop you from just turning around by looking the other direction and just having it go at the same speed? There's no kind of bias in terms of which way it goes fastest? Well, no, it, it can, yeah. Yeah, it can It can go both directions, but uh, I think the motors, we've, it's set up to go in one more efficiently, yeah, much more efficient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, when like forward, we set of course, reverse, we set maximum. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. and in the rest there isn't any of those controls, there is nothing. So it's just like, also, that's it. If you're traveling forward, and you suddenly decide you want to go in reverse, what's, will, can you actually set reverse, and will it actually slow down and then go reverse while you're hard on the reverse button? It's just no, you have to break first. Yeah. Okay. You have to stop, and then you get reverse. Otherwise, the motor the control will give you a What's the RPM of the motors? Uh, what do they spin out at? About 4,000. Uh, yeah, at top speed, yeah. Wow. The worst should about 1,000. A little more. And your warnings on the side, just roughly, what are they? Just where, where, where? Yeah, like uh, that reason, this, 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 Always, this. never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, safety gear, uh, motor, yes. uh, no, standard safety gear, at least helmet. But certainly with uh, elbow pads, knee pads, the whole whole year. Um, no drunk riding, no drug riding. Don't roll with a passenger. You know, it's a dangerous sport. Be careful, you could get injured or die. Is the, is the, the so just giving me ideas about yeah. 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 <laughs> Please do your pre-ride checks, and we'll do after the group. You know, sometimes after a few rides, some of the screws that come loose, we'll not tighten them all, but 
you know, with the vibrations comes loose, just yeah. double check it before you go, go out. The rock might get caught somewhere yeah. else, yeah. Just have a look. So one of those yeah. lists is actually a maintenance list, is it? No, we've got an actual ma manual that goes to the maintenance checks, yes. but that's just a, uh, more of a reminder. Safety for when you Safety, yeah. Okay. So we're we're sending the overseas? <clears throat> Not yet. Uh, we are about to send two to Dubai with uh, one of our very first seed investors. Came over actually to see it. Um, right. And uh, we're going to see about a third, besides the two Dubai ones, about a third in Australia, a third in uh, the European, a third in America. So obviously the US is the hardest to get insurance for, but we did manage to do it. So. <laughs> Shipping insurance? Oh, no, no. Really? Pro product liability insurance. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> shipping insurance oh. is the least of our concerns. How, how much is like shipping that particular? Uh, look, that sure. ranges between for a box. We would do it out in a heavy duty cardboard box about four hundred bucks. Three fifty to four hundred is actually cheaper to ship to Hawaii than to ship to WA. So it's one thing I found out the last two days. <laughs> yeah, would you ship it in a carton or would it be in a crate? Uh just the cart. Uh, Cardboard box with the full flaps yeah. card, and that's supposed to be what it's called. Yeah, double, yeah. double corrugated cardboard. But it's not heavy enough to warrant a, a, you know, anything further. We've, we've, uh, we've looked at other products that sort of gone to about 50, 60, and they had metal reinforcement and all that stuff. But we've, we've sort of dropped our board, board into a box and nothing, nothing yeah, in the punch it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Fine. Double yeah, what's, just what's, the, the sharp points, but just cover it up with a bit what of What PSI do you run in the tyres, or do you suggest? That, that Sometimes okay, so they're fairly firm. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we do have suspension, so yeah, yeah. we don't really, really rely on the tire to do so much for it. Um, have you trouble with uh, peeling tires off rims? No. Right? No issues. We've designed a pretty robust rim, like double what it needs to be. It's a very tight rim, and uh, putting the tires on needs a bit of a tool, but it doesn't yeah. come off. Yeah. Have you seen um, uh, like Tannis who have got the um, solid? The solid tyres that are reasonably quite wide. Because okay. um, uh, one of the things for me is like, you know, I ride bikes, there's two tyres that can go flat on me, and I'm seeing four tyres that can go flat on me. Yeah. And, you know, nothing pisses me off more than going out for a ride and then, you know, yeah. got a flat tyre. Yeah, it's no big deal to, to, to deal with it, it's just a it's a pain in the ass, that's all. So, um, can you ride with it with a single flat? I think we can, yeah. I think well, we don't, obviously, you can also go back home <coughs> because you can, but it will work, it will go. There's enough power to hit your kids. It's a bit different for a bicycle, then. Yeah, yeah. I just pop, pop them on. Do <laughs> you like, ever recommend different pressures for different surfaces? Yeah, we're going to do some sand testing with lower you know, 20 or something just to get a bit more surface area. But, I mean, you really don't notice a difference that, that often. I mean, the tire actually heats up a lot because it actually does a lot of work. Yeah. So it tilts and, and steers at the same time. So the tires do get a bit warm and quite used. But you know, just you know, mainly run about 30, 33. Oh, all right. And with tire tread, did you experiment with different types? We, we looked for a different number of tires out there to try and find the perfect one, but um, we settled on this one. Oh, the, in this, there's only. That's really the only tyre available in that particular size, the 10 by 2s Because we're sort of at an awkward size when we look for tyres. We can go a bit bigger, and there's plenty of pram tyres, but they wear out about 100 metres down the road. Yeah, yeah. Um, which would have been a good consumable, but not that quickly. Uh, so these are off-road um, scooter tyres that happen to be in this size we wanted. We could have gone uh, smaller with uh, typical mountain board, mountain board tyres or um, sort of smaller scooter tyres, but the, the uprights um, just needed more room to fit into it. So <coughs> that was the sort of, well, that was one of, the, one of the more decided factors based on what we can actually get. Mm -hmm. so if you want to go over objects, you actually need to have a bigger tire. You didn't want to go lower than about 10 inches just to get over you know, everything that occurs in nature is roughly about five Quite inches or whatever. So you're just trying to get over those obstacles. Um, yeah, about 10 inches was the, was the perfect size. So, uh, can you put a little toe hitch on it, or uh, like, come on, tell us the truth. What have you towed with it so far? I towed him on a, on a bike <laughs> up a hill. We might have a clip for it. Uh, <laughs> not on this one. But we'll tow, we'll tow other people on boards. Um, one of the pro mountain boarders for uh, the mountain board company called MBS. Um, he 
he lives in Berwick, actually, so we towed him on board behind us, <laughs> doing a bit of... Uh, Just doing jumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can tow about, oh, I'd say 150 kilos. Yeah. Pretty easily. Oh, yeah, wow. it's got a lot of grunt. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I just want to ride it, actually, tell you the truth. Take it downstairs. <laughs> we'll have a ride day in the next next month or so, I think. And the, you guys and parents want to come down and have a look. Yeah, let us know about a ride day and those. Yeah. yeah, come down. Yeah, and uh, is the investment side of things, uh, like, sorted? Are you still... For we're sort of getting ready for that phase. Um, we've got seed investors. We're looking. We're sort of getting our business case set up. We've got the demonstrate value proposition and the, the, I don't know, the getting the financials right. So we're working with you know the uh, partners to help us do that. Um, it's sort of you know in, investment for this. You can consume a product quite dangerous. It's a bit tricky, but um, you know there's we have no shortage of interest so it's just a matter of showing people okay well if you're going to do it we're going to get people that's going to be buying it and as long as, long as we demonstrate that you know we've got people we're talking to at the moment that's um interested is there any of the ip in that you've been able to protect by patent or not really we've done a patent for the um well we claimed the whole board under a patent which was a bit hopeful for it and that was it was a nice try the lawyer said but Certainly, the chassis and the uh, the suspension we have been advised is considered inventive for a board sports apparatus. So we've got a PCT uh, on that, and all the internal electronics and firmware would sort of kept secret without obviously without let out. There's no point letting it out. So that's something we might patent down the track as well. Or we'll just turn it into a trade secret or something. Yeah. <laughs> the the colour green, white, and red. Why did you decide on them, and why did you decide on the logo that you had on the top? You're going to have to ask this lawyer. Yes, I'm saying, so that's why. It's not meant to be that colour. <laughs> <laughs> He's past five. Okay. That's the logo. Not that colour, though. It should just be a nice yeah, be uh, cyan colour. And the logo? It's a cactus in front of a mountain. And it has number four on the top. What is it? That's a cactus. Oh, That's okay. a cactus logo, yeah. So the idea behind the, the whole name and the logo was the Baja is the, obviously the, the Baja 1000 rally, very off roady, uh, very probably the toughest race. Interesting. Thompson, we'll try to you know, replicate that feel. We don't want to make it too overstated, extreme board, or you know, one of those names. We said, well, just make it understated. It's a nice reference. People don't get it. That's fine. It's got two Bs, and uh, let's go from there. Mm. Yeah. So this is all this one. <laughs> I don't put a Chinese flag on it. In, the flag. <laughs> in terms of braking, does it? Do you run the same regen front and back when braking, or is it biased? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. but I'm thinking to change. <laughs> I don't know if it's this. But yes, more yes. There's always a bit of braking when you come off the throttle. That's when you let go, so you don't you know, roll on forever. So when you come down a hill, you let go of the throttle. It's almost like a downhill descent control. Just you don't roll out of control. Um, yeah. What percentage did you build in for when you're backdoor from the acceleration? What percentage of the acceleration? About one or two percent. Actually, uh, limited braking. We call it off throttle braking. So as soon as you yeah. drop the throttle, you can probably get out one or two percent of the brake, which is, you know, it'll just get you slowed down with it. Do you bring the brake lights on at the time no. that you build the acceleration? No, so at the moment, this, we have it's not on. So it's not on. Come on. Oh, yeah. 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 Option brake. Yep. So yeah, the off-throttle will go just on the rear. So the front will be always free rolling. I mean, the deciding factor was, well, you know, we tested it as if we dropped the controller, you let go, are you going to fall over when it breaks? And so we had to get to a point where it's natural, slow down. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I want to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like uh, it, like I could really see it uh, taking off. You know, Red Bull just it screams um, Red Bull to yeah. To do a decal um, for the board too. Yeah, yep. some sort of weird wacky sport like uh, monster trucks, but just in a it's in a smaller small environment. environment. <laughs> you sort of limit it where you can use it. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. All the laws in it. Uh, 
a bit of joke. You know, you find yourself on track where you can have a sport, racing sport. Yeah, exactly. And you could. Yeah. It's a fairly good vehicle. By all means, yeah, using a mountain bike track or a BMX track. Yeah, we, we yeah. test on them regularly. So. Excellent. I think Cal- the liability of, you know, danger. The danger of doing putting a law that says that. Pertaining to a, a skateboard. Yeah. There's no design regulations around. I mean, there's no design regulations surrounding a skateboard as such, and there's FCC requirement for the wireless controller that you can just buy a pre certified module for it. Um, no, I mean, we follow the model of like mountain bikes and skateboards, inherently risky. You're not buying this thinking it's going to be safe. Yeah. You grind this understanding, you know it's going to be risky. So, any sort of injuries, unless you can prove, obviously, it's a faulty design, <coughs> you stand on it, the arm breaks, you fall over. Okay, well, that's our fault, but if you run to a wall, yeah. Can drive into a wall. <laughs> we'll kind of help you on that one. <laughs> oh, look, at the moment the pre-ordering is about five thousand dollars, Aussie, or three thousand eight hundred US. We buy a lot of stuff in US dollars, so we, that's what we're based. At the start of the year, we thought cheaper in Australian dollars, but now it's not so much. <laughs> so people are having regrets of not ordering at the start of the year. I said, well, I should have done it. Do it now before it goes even lower. So yeah, uh, ideally the uh, the final pricing once we get back to us is look around three to four thousand Australian dollars. We don't want to get to the same point as the other electric skateboards because you know we want to be a few runs above where they are in terms of the exclusivity and nature of the product. Do you have any warranty or something like that? Uh, I think Australia has the, the, the automatic twelve months. It's got to work within twelve months. Um, overseas we provide about three month warranty on the parts. It's uh, mostly workmanship warranty. It's probably, of course. Um, yeah. I suppose you just assume that uh, that uh, people will crash it, and uh, um, at some point the bits will break. It's, uh, I mean, I buy had one. You be buying well. You got to buy tires every now and again. Definitely, uh, other consumable belts will come loose like after about a year. Um, tires once every, depending on how often you ride, two, three months. Um, there are little uh, wearable things inside the outdrive system that you have to replace, but they're quite cheap. Those are the only three consumables. Everything else will be a case yes, you crash it and. Um, but if you don't crash it, you're just not riding it properly, I don't agree. You're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll suspect that it will take about one year before it is replaced and just have to go through the cycles. So you build the wheels yourself, you don't buy them off the shelf? The wheels are, yeah. The tyres are off the shelf, the wheels we build um, ourselves. And the suspension, like the uprights, you get them passive? Uh, everything is CNC machined at the moment. CNC. So, and, and that's part of the way we are going to exercise to go to casting and moulding and what have you. So everything at the moment is very flexible. We can change the design overnight. We can make a new board of some sort. Um, that's the reason we're keeping it for the first at least two to three batches. So if someone does come back and feedback and say, look, right height too high or turning is not good enough, we can make a change and uh, have a new one out within a month. Change the models, is it? Yeah. <laughs> a new model. Well, at least the only criteria has got to be retrofitable to an existing one. So. Change the design in any way, but not the actual main joining points. Mm. How many of them do you have to get next to each other before you have interference problems with the remote? There's no interference. No, you write really, really side by side. We've had what well, four Just up to now. We haven't done yeah, more than that yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Same channel, but we send different So do you guys so have you to pair them, or sorry. if do you guys have to pair them, or if I have multiple <coughs> boards? Could I myself change the pairing of one controller to another board, or were they prepared when you when you send so, them out? Yeah, so we factory sent them to yeah. a certain address. So you know, you know, like we have like this big fireware, and on every single board of which I just has all this stuff. Um, if they wanted to change, if so they want to change the controller something, we could just send them a file so they could change their firmware on their board to suit the new controller. So, okay. so yeah, so basically it should be um, there is this software. You read on your control the address inside, and then you write on the software, you recommend the board to read from that address. So you can change the address of where you have to receive, but not where you send. Okay. 
So you can receive just from one and control. And the user will always be able to do that if he has 10, if he's brought 10 units of you. Yeah. One fails, one hand control fails. Yes, yeah, so right. you, you can use another He has control. that uh, information to do that, so he can do it without consulting. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. through their software. If somebody stole my board but I still had my remote, I would not be happy if uh, the thief could uh, get um, <laughs> a, a remote and get it. Uh, um, to be quite odd though, someone, like, someone buying a remote from us without having previously bought a board. Sort of, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, right now, it's all we know. The guys individually don't buy it. Um, it's more, you know, I think once we go to distribution, then that becomes what well, bit. Well, yes, yeah, partners' not, problem. Are you yeah. going to run out of distribution? Oh, look, well, you're hoping, so hoping so to. And if I, if we do, I get to see huge change in China. So we have like 254, 55 in China we're with, and. I don't know how many others. So, so maybe that would be more than you did. Yeah, we have five. Digits, so yeah, so we have fifteen for fifteen different so numbers. Like DMX, five. lighting DMX, that sort of. It's like the like a Mac address. It's basically the same address. And but yeah, we separate them. So it's like five different times fifteen. On each uh, on each on each uh, number. So sounds like we have plenty. Last week. It'll be nice we went over. So it's like take a while to Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm already in this gene like uh, like putting a um a little GPS tracker in there and then uh, putting a little uh, sound system because you've got the uh, you've got the battery there and you know you get quite good sound systems that are quite small. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, um I think so it's just drowning empty screams while you're on as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big, big plasma right in front. We can charge our phones off these. Yeah. We're out the field, so. Oh, yeah, it's your, got a little uh, USB. We, we put them on there just for yeah. us. Oh, oh, I saw this. <laughs> 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 That's gross. That's gross. But yeah, you can just stick. Yeah. It has a standard uh, Mac USB, so like, uh, like a Samsung or, or the phone. That's all part of you know the future options option ups. Yeah. Yeah. Give us a thousand dollars. We'll expose to five volt wires. Yeah. You have hydrogen wire options on your book on your catalog at the moment. Apart from the springs to suit the person's way. Uh, not at the moment. At the moment, we're sort of concentrating on getting this particular model down right, and then we've got a list of things we want to put in. A seat. Turning into like a luge or something like that, like yeah, a yeah. uphill luge. He hates it, but that's my next project to get a seat in front of him and But <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> different 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 wheels. You know, golf courses, wider wheels. You can't like these on the golf courses yet. <coughs> um, different kind of lights. Uh, Bonus board. Yeah, oh, different, oh. different battery uh, settings and you know programming modes. And get a phone app that you can link in and sort of preset it with your phone as opposed to having to so, plug it into a laptop. So. Mm. There's a lot of options we can work with. It's just going through time, you know. Oh, wow. Nice work. Nice work. Yeah, it's a lovely, it's a finished product. I know, so you're, you're well underway. Your good. development on those and design is very good. I know, so you've come up with something quite unique Thank on those and a good product. Let's see how you go with it. Just yeah. keep pushing it. It's another, this is the sort of first release. It's going to be another 12 months until the actual proper mass production friendly version. So okay. every time we finish a revision, we go, oh, yeah, we're finished now. Yeah. And then we realize, oh, then oh no. <laughs> you're never you're there, there's another whole thing. And then it's just kind of but you're saying you're going to do 50 of these. So you, you're doing a 50 run? We, we're we're doing the 50 run right now. We haven't decided how many more runs we will do after this, because it does take. See where you're up to. Yeah. yeah that's see how long it takes, how efficient we can get, what improvements we can make on just the assembling times, and so on and so on. That's where NTM is helping us as well. And then after that, you know, whether we put on a hold until um, the mass production is done, or whether we just keep selling it for cash flow reasons, then we can probably decide. Probably depend on the demand as well. You know, how yeah. much demand builds up, and a number of things. And your manufacturing company that you're talking with too, 
know, um, you've got a manufacturer and a local one here who you're working with, and those can help you help you with uh, streamlining its production. And you know, that's another thing you look at, of course, is your cost. Yeah. You know, your labour cost and, um, and what's involved in producing the, the item. Exactly. It's all the and non at the moment, stuff. how many are you looking at producing in each batch run? Like 10, 20? Yeah, 50. You've got enough nice. room for that. Yeah, we're going up. Well, we're going up physical room, uh, but <coughs> it takes us about maybe two months to get to that number. Does that mean you that... buy 50 sets of parts and then assemble yes. them? Yes. Uh, yes. Several at a time? Or... Yeah, it, it, for it to make your sort of you know, scale of economy, that's the sort of small number we yeah, need to get to. Batches of 50. Yeah. Around before we can go quick, but you can go a bit lower, but then just cut your own margins. And yeah, just the point. But it's yeah. essentially, it's a, um, the, the 50 is based on buying sets of parts. Yeah. yeah. And it's all based on CNC machining and hand assembly and everything. So, you know, or if obviously, once it gets to molding, it's going to drop price, drop cost by at least 50% of not more. There's a program on Tully called the Sharks. Are you considering appearing? The, the Sharks. A oh, Shark Tank? Shark Tank, yes. Yeah, oh, I think it's finished, isn't it? Season one. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a consideration? <laughs> uh, it depends. It depends on uh, from the five investors up there at the moment. We sort of struggle to see what value add they could put in except money. Um, no offense to any of them. It's, you know, we sort of want, if someone was extreme sports up there, I'll go, yeah, let's go. But, you know, boost the juice. Nice. Yeah. But <laughs> um, I can see uh, a version with um, Caterpillar tracks no, after the snow. Yep. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, uh, went about making a, a snow couch, electric snow couch. Yep. Um, which had varying success because he made his own tracks and uh, they, yeah, teething problems, shall we say. Um, but, yeah, you know. I did a concept drawing for it a while ago, that put a track on each corner. It's still in my mind, but yeah, I've got other things to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, uh, you should be really proud of yourselves. Uh, is, that, is this your day job for, for all of you? Yep. Right, what's your day jobs beforehand? I was a robotics and automation engineer. Yeah, engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, uh, yeah. I did engineering, yeah. In in the, 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 I did engineering consulting with, worked with a brand called Power Station, so you guys won't like that too much. <laughs> you know, Pro Valley, so yeah. Designing stuff. Oh, it's good that you've, uh, you, you know, you, you woke up and uh, <laughs> smelled the flowers. I'd that, yeah. Like this was very much a, a fun project that turned into, you know, a, the fact that it's powerful because it's electrical and it, it responds faster, it's, you know, it's a bonus for us, yeah. That's right, there's a lot more you can do with it being electric, so, yeah, it's a lot more capability. And also it's easier to, I mean, yes, the batteries are, you know, dangerous, as an exclusive ship, but you don't have anything about EPA to worry about when you ship to the US states, otherwise you've got to, you know, pay them some money. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, we have same trouble bringing batteries into Australia on those. On those, uh, occasionally they'll be packaged correctly, and um, you know they'll just end up being sent back. You don't have to send them again. Mm. Well, all batteries from China usually come with a little bullshit sticker on them that says that they're only uh, yeah two ampere hour, two ampere hour, uh, <laughs> some rubbish like that. Big battery like this. <laughs> yeah, that's better than what we get. Like when a battery comes in and it says 15 ampere hours, and it's just about two ampere hours. Yeah. Um, how big's the? Can you turn it up so we can see the size of the battery compartment? Because uh, I'm already thinking of like upgrading it to NMC and seeing how many cells I can put in there. The battery goes from yeah about about there to there. Yeah. It's cool. Oh wow. Okay. So you could really go like maybe 25. Yeah, but you mentioned 30. 30. This, this is a PCB. Yeah. And here we have the yeah, differential. Yep. And here we have the big contact. So we can reduce the size of this, put more, more like forward, yep. uh, remove this, and then increase. Put them somewhere. So but, but yeah, like but we have to like change quite a lot of what to do. Like in some of the designs that we're building here, like with the e bikes, um, we're not using contactors and that anymore. I was using a MOSFET, um, soft start MOSFET power switching. 
on those. You know, uh, to turn your power on. How many coding curves have you got? What's the um, um, 210 amps per MOSFET. So we might parallel two or three of them on those. So you, think you can easily handle 400 amps on those with yeah, the MOSFET you, controller. You bought this. These are 120 amps at the peak for each. <coughs> so we'll be for, well, we're not using all that kind. Oh, yeah. So what's your contact to rate it at then? Contact you using what's the rating of the mechanical contactor in it? Oh, it's on the head. It's on the spec sheet. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because we, I mean, we are not using all that power, but we said we are buying this just, you know, just to be safe. We are definitely in the next generation uh, reduce the power controller and remove the contactor because we see we are not actually using all that power. For this, for the safety reason, we say, okay, just use a big contact so, uh, Yeah, um, at the moment I'm doing an electric go kart that's um, five kilowatts, on those, and we're using MOSFET, um, you know, power switching that, and our contactors and that as well. Yeah. Did I say the uh, change the contact to the MOSFET? Uh, yes, MOSFET. yeah, and those that will save a little bit of weight and uh, earn that in it. And like it's even C factors, like your headway cells on those. They were quite physically large on those with um, 18650 NMC batteries. You can fit um, a lot more capacity and that in there. I don't know what the cost is going to be compared with the headways. Yeah, this cost comparison is important as well. Isn't it? <coughs> and that's the BMS factor as well. Yeah, that's the big, uh, the big thing. BMS factor. Like, are we going um, to the headways that? actually require more BMS management than the NMCs would. Okay. This is less because uh, of because it would be mine phosphate and have a lot of shallow work voltage range. Okay. Yeah, um, and the NMCs are easier to, to build a BMS for. Yeah. So, so we think that <laughs> yeah, well, we monitor every cell of this port, so you know, we always yeah. know what's going on. Mm. Okay. In terms of like range due to battery size, what's the limiting factor? Is it how much physical space you have for batteries, the weight, or the price? It's it's all put together. You don't okay. Know batteries on this make like really heavy and really hard to ride but it's going you know. so you've, you've kind of tuned it to the point where it's kind of tr getting towards all of those yeah exactly yeah, yeah. oh yes there'd be the price as well so yeah. that's an important factor yeah. too yeah. So. so if you took price out of it would you sacrifice a bit of weight to get more range or I probably yeah. would yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make a second package <laughs> kilos. That's four and a half kilos. Okay, so yeah, okay. it's not a lot of weight in the whole product. No. Not just the box, just the, these box with the motor were 11 kilos. Okay. There's no real silver bullet yet, except the battery is probably cumulative of everything getting bolted on to get a higher weight. Mm. Yeah, well. Well, it's, I can see we've got the battery compartment's fairly large, so uh, I can see you know further, um, I mean, you know, battery technology is just going, going crazy. So I can see uh, like in three years' time having a double, triple, easily double yeah. the triple yeah. range. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, and probably change. a little lighter as well. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely change, yeah. We'll do contact or reduce the PCB. The problem with the PCB, I mean, the PCB now is quite big. And we are doing, I mean, I designed this way because we saw the all by hand, I saw the all by hand, so every single component. So do like four layer, for example, or double side, and so it's all by hand, that will be quite hard. So, uh, too much human error. Yeah, so uh, what the design was like more do this, do properly, and then the next time you do better. Yeah, you know, you've got to get your hands there for clips and stuff. So yeah, bigger piece of it just makes a whole lot easier for us to assemble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Like the main part, like the PCB, are like the connects. So like the four, the there's four connector on the motors. They are quite big. I mean, quite a lot of big. Thanks for. So yeah, most of the space is with the connect. Gotcha. And a lot of the design considerations are for assembly in that battery box. So we don't want things shorting out. We don't want Things be able to get across too easily. So, no, oh, no, no, it isn't a G. You have to think of how you're going to construct it and yeah. you have a room for the connectors and uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, uh, require just a lot of a lot of space in there just so you can get your hand in there to sort of stuff in as a main consideration. So, even though there is some free space in there, 
putting other stuff in that might just hinder the production process a little bit. Well, of course, you know, you don't want to do that. Yeah, your labour and construction has got to be able yeah. to be simple to be uh, sent yeah. off and then so. Yeah. My 70 year old mother would really like to have uh, some uh, handlebars up the front yep. when, she's, uh, <laughs> when she's going down the shops on it. Yep. Yeah, to hang the shopping bags on it. And yep. But if, if the 25 year old male saw a 70 year old woman on one, he would. You've got to wait. You've got to wait for the Facebook. Yeah, we'll paint a different colour. Sell it on a yeah, different yeah. brand. <laughs> nice board or something. Different <laughs> brand names. We'll put, it, we'll, we'll put the 75 year old mother, uh, grandmother on an um, uh, electric trike or something. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the motor's AC or DC or? Uh, for us at least. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we that's why like all the motor going all, all the same speed necessary is more for the speed, the actual speed of the motor comes to the next one. Right. We're on a temperature sensor on that, that piece of the inside the motor as well, so we can monitor it all times. So. <coughs> yeah. That's uh yeah. Yeah, I want to ride one. So, um, yeah, let's organise this, this ride day. Yeah, sure, yeah. <clears throat> Be good, yeah, we are. Yeah. Get uh, some, bring my helmet and uh, my uh, GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> Sign a waiver. <laughs> there will be a waiver. <laughs> there is a, there's always a waiver. When you come here tonight, did you think you were going to get so many questions? Oh, I always expected it. <laughs> yeah. It's good to get tech questions. Usually, when we teach, we get a lot of the business questions. Yeah. <laughs> what colours does it come in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much the extent of the tech development. How fast does it go? Yeah. How fast does it go? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, yeah, we just had a little bit of a wall. Yeah, yeah. Keeps us. <laughs> no, great. Thank you. Okay, yeah. thanks, guys. Yeah, so there is a charger, it's a plug.